National History Day claims that over half a million students take part in this every year. So that's starting at, at maybe at the school level, going into the regionals, to the states, and, in, and into the nationals. And it's worldwide, too. When uh, our Peters Township 3 finished in, in, in uh, third place in the nationals, we got our story to go that far uh, this year. Uh, it's it's pretty an amazing event. Seven months of working on this project, the girls discovered they had certain skills that complement one another. Each of us is better at critiquing a certain aspect of the board in our research. Amelia is really good at finding mistakes and cutting words, and Robin's really good at research. And I'm Sophia, and I'm just very meticulous about the board. Everything had to be perfect with the layout and the matting for me. And I wanted to point that out, that you gotta do the research and you gotta be able to you know, uh, bring your research to life. And then you have to make this board tell the story. In the judging process, the judges come around and the girls are there and they get to talk about how they did all this stuff. You know, but in the final analysis, the board itself has to stand alone. You have to be able to walk up to that board and know the story. And in this case, they followed it uh, from the beginning to the negotiation part and then the, the, the long-term implications, you know. And uh, that was uh, unique when I first saw this. I realized they took a subject that people usually don't come up with. They somehow come up with a union failing or the workers and, uh, you know, Berkman trying to assassinate Frick. Uh, you know, it was all a problem with the workers. When we know that it was Frick. <laughs> it wasn't going to compromise on anything. It, it was going to be his way or the highway, as it turned out. So what I'm going to do is turn it over, and uh, they're going to pass the microphone around and talk about uh, the research, how they come up with the subject matter, how they come up with that unique, uh, you know, the, the, the theme this year was conflict and compromise. Most of the exhibits that I saw followed that path. It was a conflict, and then somebody made a compromise. And the fact that they reversed that to say that there was a conflict, but there was no compromise, uh, made this a uh, very unique project. Okay, let's go. Hello, I am Robin, and uh, we started this project a little later than we probably should have. Uh, it was kind of a last minute decision. Our teacher, Mr. Elders, came uh, in to talk to our class and he was like, hey, we're doing National History Day if anyone wants to do it. So we were like, hey, why not? <laughs> um, I have done it the past two years. The other girls did it two years ago, uh, but they didn't do it last year. And then but we all decided, why don't we just do it all together? And I think that was a great choice since, as um, Jerry said, we all have different different strengths and combined we did so much better than we would have done separate. And um, we, we started when our teacher came in, he, he said like, hey, anyone want to do this? And we were like, why not? <laughs> we didn't have anything else to do and <laughs> so we just did. And uh, we started by just trying to figure out some topics and uh, but then in our social studies class, our teacher showed us a video of numerous labor struggles and the homestead strike stood out to us because it was a local topic and it was very interesting. And so, but we did some other research trying to figure out some different topics, but we always came back to the homestead strike. So that's what we chose to do. Um, so after we decided on our topic, we had to actually get and put a put our ideas into action. So we started by getting research and we went to the Pitt Library um, and we got a lot of books written about the Homestead Strike and so we started, we read those and then we, um, did, we used information from those, from the book, from those books and then we also found articles online. We found some first person um, diaries online too and one of the most important um, primary sources we found were the actual letters from Frick to Carnegie and um, that which actually showed how 
what they were actually thinking and doing during the strike. Um, then after we had all our research, we finally started doing the board and we started with um, the board that they give you, uh, which is just this cardboard. Uh, it's cardboard and then we put um, foam board on top of it. And so and it was a lot smaller and it looked a lot different than this. And then we had to get all our information and actually put it together so that we could make something that actually made sense. And so we got up quotes and we got we typed up our information and we found a layout that would help us display the information in a way so others who hadn't heard about the Homestead Strike could understand and that's how we got this layout. It was a little different before um, and we corrected it. And so yeah, that's how we got our board. And then as we went through the judging, as we went through the judging, we had to um, take, they gave us sheets that gave us information on how they felt about our project and how we could improve. And so we took that and that's how we got to this final board, which is a lot cooler than our other board. <laughs> um, yeah, that was really helpful. I don't think we would have made it to now. We wouldn't have gotten third at nationals if we hadn't taken their advice, or maybe even not even gotten to states without taking some of the advice that they gave us at regionals. So the road to nationals was not an easy one, and we have a lot of people. Yeah. We have a lot of people to thank for um, what we did, especially like our parents, our teachers, everyone here. Um, it, after states, a few of our judges recommended that we upgrade to wood. And we like kind of thought it over. We had to like make a design for it, and it was stressful. Like our teacher hadn't really done it very much before. We are not the best at using machinery in the <laughs> shop, but um, it, with the help of our shop teacher and some other people at our school, it really worked out. So it happened that um, nationals was right after our school got out. So kind of finals week, it was also National History Day week. We were like working for eight hours a day after school. And it was crazy, but it was really fun and worth it. And I think I speak for all of us when I say that we're really glad that we got this far and that we decided to work together. And as nerve wracking as it can be, going in front of judges three times, I think it was always a very rewarding experience. They were always very happy to see kids there and invested in history and they just loved it and we loved it too. We got a comment that our timeline wasn't explained well enough, so we added some explanations in the front too. Um, and we also added a few quotes, uh, more quotes throughout the board, because um, we have a 500 word word limit, but quotes don't count, so we always try to use as many quotes as possible. <laughs> yeah, I think this is just a rudimentary. Does that have to dismantle, or do you have to carry it like that? Okay, so it does dismantle, and we were actually here a little early. We have a drill and screws, so we tra we move them in those sleeping bags that are over there, and they went all the way to D.C. in our teacher's trunk. <laughs> and we, yeah, once you get to nationals, they don't want to see that um, your parents are helping you put it up. So the three of us have to, like, put everything together and lift it. It's pretty heavy, but... <laughs> Titles, we realized like you have to have some fun with it. You can't just be so serious that you're just stressing out that your title's not the best. So we were like being a little silly with it. We were coming up with fun titles like the frickin' homestead strike. <laughs> um, which made it a lot easier for us to come up with creative ID titles like this one because we were coming up with such weird with, like weird <laughs> titles like that. Um, so we wanted to make sure it explained it enough, and we felt like, I think Amelia came up with this one, uh, we wanted the flexibility to compromise, like really, it was such a bold statement, um, and it's like really <laughs> makes the, ju when the judges see it, they're like, that's interesting, because that's not what the theme is like, totally saying, like conflict and compromise, they want they're thinking like, oh, there's a conflict and there's a compromise, but when they see his inability to compromise, they're like, oh, this sh this is interesting, let's look at this. So that was why we really chose that one. I also want to 
also think that a title really makes a project. So something you have to look for um, when you're <laughs> choosing a title is like, Sophia was saying, something eye-catching, but also self-explanatory. Like we would see some that like, didn't quite, we weren't, you have to read into it to actually know what it's about, which is interesting in its own way. But I think for our approach, we wanted it, people to know what they were going to look at before they looked at it. After we take the board uh, away from here, we, it will be displayed for a year at the Pennsylvania Museum in Harrisburg. So uh, that's one way that we can keep it alive. And I, from what Jerry's told me, it's going to be on uh, uh, the internet too, so we can find it there. But yeah, it's very important to keep young people in history, so the, I think the National History Day competition does a good job with that. And when we were at the regional competition, we also, and the state competition, we saw other boards with the Homestead Strike too, and that was really cool because other people were interested in the same topics as us, though it's hard because they're a bit harder competition, but it was, a, it was really interesting. <laughs> I was so scared, but we got, and but once you actually start being judged, that nerve, your the butterflies fly away from you. It's not like you're not as nervous anymore. Um, and nationals was a little different than states and regionals because one of our judges actually was deaf, and he so we had um, somebody telling us what he was saying. Um, and so that was kind. Of, it was kind of. It was a little bit harder for us to understand what his questions were exactly. Because his translator wasn't really. I feel like she didn't really understand exactly what he was trying to say. Um, but um, we were able to work through that, and it was. I. It was new, and it was a different experience, and I enjoyed that. Um, the questions they asked us some questions on. Um, the content, mostly about the impacts of the strike and um, uh, how this is influencing, how it influences us today. Um, and they, but they also asked us about the layout of the board and how we chose this. And yeah, that, that's so that, that's <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like Sophie was saying. You get really, really nervous before you win, and I know I can speak for. Okay, um, yes, you get very nervous, and I'm sure they would tell you that I tend to overthink things a lot. <laughs> so um, they have open viewing time for other exhibits, and we went back a few times. And like, well, it does scare you because they're really cool. Like everyone puts so much work into their projects, and it really shows. Um, it like. It's fun to see, but also makes you even more nervous. <laughs> but you do get to meet a lot of cool people. We have people from like Hawaii, and they do this button trading thing where every state has a pin with their name on it, and you get to like talk to people and trade with them, and it's really fun. Um, you are very nervous when you go in, but the judges are all very nice people, and they try to make you feel comfortable. And so it's not too bad once you get in there, but building up to it is a very scary. <laughs> mentioned a couple of questions they had about the impact today and other questions. What was the one that they asked and what was your answer that you felt like we nailed it? Asked us if they wanted us to say anything else about the topic that we thought they should know and I think that we really nailed that because some of the stuff we had talked over we knew a lot about and exactly how to put it and we got to explain that when they asked us. So they asked us about um, the anarchy section with Alexander Berkman and how that, we told them how that influenced the strike and how that influenced how things are today, the labor movement. And we feel, I feel like that was definitely one of the things that really put us over, over because it showed how we had um, detailed knowledge and we had a deep, un deeper understanding of how this, how this ties into um, the labor movement and, and how things are today. Um, and Frank was just <laughs> making decisions he didn't really know 
what he was doing, but he knew one thing he wanted, he didn't want to give in to the strikers, so he just stayed put and he would not compromise. Yeah, played a very big factor in this because like it says all there, they oh Carnegie trusted Frick's judgment, which turned out to be a very bad mistake. But um yeah, I think both of them were somewhat to blame, but probably like Sophia was saying more Frick because he actually did everything. You can't really control what actions happen when you're overseas, so. And I think I definitely want to pursue something with history in the future, even if I'm not like a professional historian, if I'm not like a, a history teacher, I'd still want to be involved in the community, and I'd still want to be learning, and I'd still want to be very in depth. I kind of would want to volunteer to be a judge at National History Day, because it seems pretty fun. Um, from what I've heard, I definitely want to keep with history because it's so amazing and so interesting. I'm definitely, yeah, I'm definitely going to be staying. I'm going to be staying in the historic history community. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also agree with that. I want to stay with history because you can always know more. There's so much out there. So much more you can learn. It's really fun. Yeah, that all, my whole life, I always debated what I would field I want to go into when I'm older and for like five years I wanted to be a candle maker uh, but I, I want to, I, yeah, so I think I, I've definitely thought about being a historian or a history teacher but yeah I, I don't know I definitely want to be involved in history though. Are you guys what year in school are you? We will be freshmen. You will be freshmen? Yeah. Yes this upcoming year. <laughs> Uh, well, we're all in band. Uh, I play the trombone, Sophia plays the oboe, and Amelia plays the flute. So that's uh, that takes up a lot more time, but we usually can find a way to finish some history day. Sure, we'll be doing clubs in the high school next year, which will take up a little more of our time. We're all involved with the meet with theater and the musical and stuff, but we've always found ways to work. We always found a way to work in National History Day. Our schedules were never really in conflict. Um, occasionally we have to miss um, musical practice for it, but that really wasn't a big deal. Um, I feel like working on National History Day was more fun than musical practice, honestly. I had a lot of fun working on it. Yeah, um, Robin and I actually came right here from a marching band performance. So we do a lot of marching band, and like Sophie was saying, we all do theater as well. So it actually happened that right before the regional competition, our school's musical was happening. So we finished the musical, and while the cast party was going on, we were upstairs in the school working on our board. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a lot of conflict in today's um, workforce with like unions and um, the labor movement. Like, um, but it's definitely a lot better than it was um, back then. It's not perfect. It's definitely not perfect. Um, but we took some of the things that we learned um, back then and uh, that helped us to develop. Um, but we, there's still a lot that we have to learn. There is a lot we have to learn. And I think one thing we always touch on when we talk to people is that you need to learn from your mistakes in history. And there were a lot of mistakes made here. And I think that it really helps us a lot as like in government and stuff and just to look at what we've done in the past. But People's history does resonate among uh, our school children. And one of our major goals is to have more uh, labor history taught in the schools. Many schools, there's nothing at all about these strikes, certainly nothing about the interpretation of the strikes other than they fought, they lost, that sort of thing. Um, in fact, um, there's so much to learn as, as you all have, have demonstrated, so we're, we're so grateful. And um, on behalf of, of Rivers of Steel Heritage uh, Organization and our organization, we want to show our appreciation by the presentation of, of some packages to you. Hello, thank you guys for coming. Uh, I'm Susie Bloom, I'm the Director of Education with Rivers of Steel, and we're so excited that you could come here today. And I wanted to also present you with some, some tokens of our appreciation for your hard work. And I highly recommend, and I know Jerry will too, uh, 
volunteer to be a judge at History Day. We had a blast. Um, it was my first year doing it, and it was a great experience. And you get to see the quality of work that the students put forth. And I'm just really, really impressed. And it's very eye-opening the amount of time that students will dedicate to their projects. So thank you again. I also, on behalf of the uh, Battle Homestead Foundation, would love to uh, present to you an honorary membership in the Battle of Homestead Foundation. This little card enables you free admission into the Heinz History Center and the, and the, um, and the uh, Metacroft uh, Rock Shelter and also the, the, um, uh, the Fort Pitt Museum downtown. So, uh, Sophia. And Amelia, welcome to the Battle Homestead Foundation. And uh, we also are, are well aware of the uh, hard work that our teachers do in, the, in our schools. And if you could uh, uh, present to, your, to Josh Elders, your faculty advisor and honorary membership, we'd appreciate it. In consideration of your hard work, we applaud you.